Today is all about food disruption, and I'm not talking about just today, but today in the food world. You're not supposed to move that mic, Ethan. <laughs> Ethan, Ethan is a food disruptor. Not only is he a food disruptor, a he's a disruptor. microphone I'm disruptor. The mic. So we heard we heard Ethan this morning. Um, I met Ethan a couple months ago. Yep. Uh, Beyond Meat um, is is his company, is his vision, and what I love is, um, and correct me if I'm wrong when I get this story, when I tell the story, but Ethan's grandfather had a dairy farm, uh, or at least had cows yeah. on, the, on the property. Well, I gotta, I'll explain. So my yeah. dad is, is a professor. Um, right. and, uh, of environmental studies. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, okay. uh, and so we grew up in the city, but, but growing up, uh, he hated the city because uh, he grew up in the countryside. And so every chance he got, he'd take us out to this farm we have in the western part of the state of Maryland. And uh, it was supposed to be a place just to go to recreate and, and be, you know, with nature and everything. But he's kind of entrepreneurial himself, and so he started a dairy farm out there. And so we had about 100 head of Holstein cattle. And so my weekends in summertime, I spent a lot of time uh, around. So it was your animals. dad, not your my grandfather. Dad, yeah. My grandfather also had some some experience there too, but it was more so that experience with my dad. Yeah. So so it's real interesting growing up with cows. Yeah. And growing up with with the dad, and isn't your mom? A professor of environmental studies too. So, so my yeah. So my dad is a my dad's actually a philosopher who uh, taught early in his career at a place called St. John's, uh, where you have to teach knowledge as it emerges through human history. So he got very into ecology and biology and all these other things, and so he's now at McGill University in, in Montreal. Um, but my mother was an editor growing up, so. So I got it from both sides. Yeah, so so having that environmental knowledge growing up, yeah. having the, the cow experience, yeah. um, it makes you create this new company, yeah. this disruptive company called Beyond Meat. Yeah. Um, I've tasted it. I've been to the facility. Yeah, I've seen coming. what you're doing. It's it's fabulous. Thank you. Um, you're now, I, I heard this morning, in 25,000 stores. We are, yeah. Which is fabulous. It's a wonderful experience. Yeah, yeah. And, and certainly the buzzword that I'm hearing here um, as we walk up and down the aisles, is plant-based everything is where it's at. Um, I, I've heard the words beyond meat a lot well, thank you. Uh, from, from a lot of people. Thank you. Uh, but what I really want to talk about, because you talked a lot about the company, I've written about the company, I'm going to write more about the company in an upcoming book that I've got. Um, but, you know, this is your first time ever at the Fancy Food Show. It is, yeah. So yeah. what I would love to hear from you is your experience at the Fancy Food Show. I've been coming here since I'm a teenager with my dad who was in the food <laughs> oh, business. Great. So so my lens is slightly different than your lens. So I right. want to look through your lens sure. as you walked up and down the aisles. What did you see? What are the trends? What do you think of the Fancy Food Show? Great. Well, so first of all, um, you know, we've gotten an invitation over the years and I just really enjoyed meeting you when you were at our facility and you'd asked me to come up and, and uh, just because of my relationship with you and, and, and the great time we had together, I said, oh, let's do it. And uh, so I didn't know what to expect, um, but I get a lot of energy from being around the other entrepreneurs. Um, and the panel I was on today, uh, just love the vision they have and, and the, uh, the notion that, you know, if there's a personal issue that you have that you're trying to solve for your family, that you can go out and create a business around that. And so many of the businesses here speak to that truth. Uh, it, it's it's really invigorating to be around it. So I'm enjoying the show. Uh, I just love seeing all the different products. And I do agree with you that that we've moved from a push environment with respect to plant-based meat to one where it's now pulling. People are pulling us toward them. Uh, there's a latent desire for what we're doing and demand for what we're doing. As we get closer and closer to building a piece of meat that has no differences from its animal protein equivalent, we welcome in literally you know, hundreds of thousands of new consumers with every incremental change and step we make forward to making this product as good as it can be. And it's in restaurants now, it's in supermarkets it now. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're developing, yeah. you know, you had me taste some new products that yeah. are not yet on the market. Yeah. I can't talk about them. Yeah. But you know, one of Phil uh, Kafrakis and I were talking this morning, right before the Disruptor panel, and uh, he shared with me a hashtag that we want to get out there. It's hashtag Food Innovation Nation, yeah. because we're really, you know, at a movement. Um, and again, I've been coming to this show, you know, for a long time, and the community spirit, the entrepreneurship, the energy that you just talk about yeah. is higher than ever before. It is. And
and, and it's, it's fabulous because people like you, people like Shannon, Pradeep, you're changing the food world. It's a, it's a new generation. It's not someone, you know, who, who's in their basement, came up with a, you know, another ketchup, right, you know, right. nothing against ketchup, sure. uh, you know, puts, puts a label on it and goes out there to sell it. You guys are game changers. Well, we're trying, and I appreciate being even part of that discussion, and, and I think it's, you know, what's happening for us is we're realizing that people are now thinking about food uh, in much broader terms than before. When they think about what they're going to eat, they're thinking about climate, they're thinking about their own health, they're thinking about the natural resource use that goes into it, um, and they're thinking about the transparency of the company that's producing it. And so we're benefiting from all those trends because we have good answers in all of those uh, areas. You do, you do. And, and so um, when you begin with that end in mind, uh, you know, and, and, and strive to make a product that people are going to love, and then just see them like it and buy it, it's an, an amazing and uh, amazing experience. And so uh, we, we feel, all of us at the company, very blessed to be part of it. And we're growing because we, we you know, we, we don't settle, we're not saying that our product we have today is indistinguishable from meat. It's not, there are differences, um, but we're trying to collapse those differences as quickly as we can. And you, as, as you saw from, from when you visited with us, and by the way, that research lab has been built out now, the, the walls are up and, yeah. and uh, equipment will be going in soon. But we have this thing called the Manhattan Beach Project, which I'm very proud of, and that's really uh, an effort to, to, to try to get the brightest uh, scientists in the world in their fields bring them uh, into our company and then give them a single goal, which is to build meat directly from plants and to do that so it's indistinguishable. And it's not going to happen overnight, but every year we get better. And you know, I think the Beyond Burger speaks to, to that ethos that you know, we're going to put something out in the market and then immediately we're going to try to make it obsolete because we're going to make something better. Um, but we do that within a certain set of guardrails. We're not going to use genetic modification. We're not going to use artificial ingredients. We're going to use things to the extent that we can that mom and dad are super familiar with, right? And that's really important because our audience is those families. It's those four or five folks around the table that want to have more burger occasions, not less, and we are trying to enable them to do that. I've spoken about this before. You know, my, my, my kids eat our products quite a bit. My son particularly, and he has probably four or five burgers a week. Right, and and uh, you know he would never be able to do that with 80/20 because we'd be worried about the cholesterol or saturated right. fat levels, of course, uh, and all other issues. Uh, so he's having more occasions, burger occasions, and eating more of what he loves rather than less. And that's really the way to think about our business. Uh, you know, just like the cell phone is a better version of the landline, how can we put position our business in the public psyche? So they're feeling they're getting something better, they're not sacrificing. And you know, your, your son is a great example. Um, burgers are fun. They're awesome. They're fun to yeah. eat. Yeah. Uh, but every time I have a traditional burger, um, you know, you're worried about all the things yeah. that you said. So you're yeah. not gonna have four or five of them a week. Yeah. I'm lucky on a traditional side, if I have one burger, Every other week, yeah. Um, yeah. but you know, to that point, we can, we can give kids and and adults fun food that's healthy for them. Yeah. The one thing that I that I want to end with, and this is really a compliment to you, because I visit a lot of food companies, I've tasted a lot of stuff. You were one of the few people, after I tasted your burger, that said to me, "Okay." Tell me the truth. <laughs> what what could I do better with it? What's off with it? Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. And that curiosity that you've Thanks. got Thanks. about your product is Thanks. certainly what's what's leading um, this sea the sea change for Beyond Burger for the entire uh, burger revolution that's taking thanks. place. So congratulations. Th thank you. Thank you. No, Great it's a, success. It's a labor yeah. love, and thanks yeah. for having me here. It's awesome. No, of course, cool. and thank you for being a disruptor. Let's keep, do it. Keep it going. Thank you. So we're done with SFA News Live. Now the show's still going on for another four hours or so. I'm gonna go eat. But you're gonna go <laughs> eat. You, what, what are you gonna eat? I, you know, I'm just gonna graze. I'm gonna go okay. and just get it all. Okay, so a couple aisles down, there's a, a pizza oven. Right. Um, it's rounded. I've okay. never seen one before. Okay. They are making fabulous pizza. All right. So, cool. so make sure you right head there. there. I got my CFO and COO here. I'm gonna okay. Bring them, so, okay. Yeah. So everybody, get a piece of pizza Good. on me. Right. Oh, you thank <laughs> <you>. <laughs> and thanks so, so much for coming to the Fancy Food Show and being part of the panel. Uh, so we're done for the day. Don't forget, we're on Facebook Live. You can revisit all these interviews, also on YouTube and also on SFA's webpage. Now that's going to take about a week or so, but this Fancy Food Show is fabulous. Again, hashtag food innovation nation to see where the food industry is going. Not just gourmet foods, not just specialty foods. This is exciting foods. This is the foods of the future because of guys like this, Thank Ethan you. Brown. Thank Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you on YouTube.